Hey everybody, it's Molly with All Ears. I am here at Universal Studios. Well, really, I'm at Hogwarts here to do a much requested video. Today, I'm gonna eat as many delicious Harry Potter treats, drinks, snacks, everything I can find to find the tastiest food here in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. But that's a lot of eating, so I brought in recruits. Everyone, yeah. say hello to Morgan. Hey guys. She's our news editor. She's awesome, even though she's a Hufflepuff. We'll get into mm. it. Well, I'm ready to eat. But Morgan is a fellow Harry Potter fan, so we are going to find the best snack in Harry Potter world. Let's do it. Let's go. Hope you're hungry. Well, there's no letter, better way to start our day than with butter beer. Yes, there are two different kinds of butter beer that you can get at the carts and around the different places in both Hogsmeade and Diagon Alley. You can get it frozen or you can get it iced. I really like the frozen. I also like the frozen, but I tried the iced for the first time last time and I really liked it. So I'll get the iced, you get the frozen. We'll see which one's really better. Here are our two butter beers. Here is the regular one. It's just like a cold drink with the foam on top. Here's the frozen. It's like a slushy with the foam on top. Interestingly enough, I asked for a straw for the cold one as well. And she said that it would overflow and change the flavor. So who knows what kind of wizard magic's in there, but we're ready to try them. All right, it's butter beer time. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, that tastes so good. It's so good. I gotta say, I am really digging the cold butter beer recently. It's not quite as sweet. The foam is still really sweet as the regular, but the drink itself almost has like a little spice to it. I don't mean like hot spice, I mean like cinnamon or something. Whereas the frozen, I feel like it's, it's all about the sweet. Honestly. It's like drinking a cupcake. The it's frozen is- kind of like drinking a cupcake. Yeah. So both are delicious. Both are refreshing. I think more people like the frozen. And it's really hot, so it's an, it's really nice and refreshing. It's just super sweet. Not that this one isn't sweet, but man, it is going down real easy, and I'm not getting brain freeze. So. I know. This is perfect on a hot day. It's, you know what? You can't go wrong with frozen or an iced butter beer. It's like a cupcake. No matter what variety you like, you gots to get butter beer when you come to Harry Potter. You didn't even, I don't even think you came if you didn't get butter beer. No. And then just come over drinking in front of the castle. Just for good measure. It's really magical. Don't drink it right before getting on Forbidden Journey though. No. So for all your butter beer needs, there's basically any food location in the Wizarding World sells it. Um, so you can get it in the quick service restaurant, you can get it in the full service restaurant, you can get it at the walk-up stands. Um, but here in Hogsmeade, there's two of these carts that specifically sell butter beer, they may have some bottled beverages as well, but they specifically sell the hot and iced butter beer. So this is a great place to come if you're just walking up to get, get a drink. We're gonna go into Honeydukes now for what may be multiple treats for multiple sweets, but there's one thing we definitely wanted to try. Bertie bought every flavor beans, and they mean every flavor. Fred swears he got a bogey flavored one once. So here are the Bertie Bots beans. I'm a little stressed because the, the kind you can buy like at Target and stuff say what the flavors are so you could be on the lookout for the gross colors. But this is going to just be like Russian roulette and it's going to be either really great or really terrible for us. Here are the Birdie Bots Every Flavor Beans. They are all mixed in there. You might get, well, just about Someone's any flavor in here. Yeah. That one looks like it's probably like strawberry lemonade, tutti frutti or something like that. But then uh, the green ones, I feel like they could be pear and they could be booger. Yeah, tan I think could be a whole variety of flavors. Oh boy, here we go. I took the one that looks like tutti frutti because I'm being a baby about it. Mm. 
bubble gum. So, or Tutti Fruity. Jelly beans kind of all taste the same to me. But so far, so good. So now we both have this one, which is like green with brown dots. It bottoms up. Here we go. <laughs> it tastes like grass. <laughs> or like spinach. Not good. I think it's grass. I think it's grass. Now we've got this one. It's fine, fellow. It's like tan with some brown spots. So it's either like toasted marshmallow or something terrifying. Yeah. All right. Mm. Oh. Mine's marshmallow. Yeah, mine is Mine's too. Mine's definitely marshmallow. All right. That worked out. That was good. Now we're trying this one, which I think is buttered popcorn, which is actually the one flavor of jelly bean that I really, really like. All right, let's try it. <laughs> That's not popcorn. That is a nightmare. <laughs> is that earwax? <laughs> Don't you want to come do this with your friends and family? Does yeah. it, aren't we making this seem fun? Guys, this is crazy. It'd be something fun to do when, like, while you're waiting in line or something. So, Birdie Beats, Birdie Bots, every flavored bean. Um, it's a good time. Highly recommended. A fun thing about these beans, though, too, if you saw us eating that vomit flavored one, you were like, wow, that looks so fun. I want to do that, but I'm not going to Universal anytime soon. You can actually get, I don't know if they're the exact same, but I kind of think they're the exact same, at Target or other major retailers, I'm sure. Um, Jelly Belly has a brand, which again, I'm like 99% sure those are Jelly Belly. Um, they sell them, but, but they call them something different, right? It's something like Russian roulette. Yeah. And, Jelly beans. And on the back, it actually shows like, here's the brown one. It's either marshmallow or vomit. And then it's fun to like hand out the same color to everybody and try it. So if you saw that and thought that looks like a delight, I can't wait to eat a booger flavored jelly bean. You could do it right now. You just got to go to Target. There's another cart here in Hogsmeade where you can get a few things. They have fresh fruit, they have whole fruit, uh, cups of fruit, and then sometimes there's grapes over here. Sometimes they have watermelon slices you can get. They have beer, so if you don't want to wait in line at the Hogshead to get an alcoholic beverage, you can get a beer here. Uh, nothing says Wizarding World like a Coors Light, I know. Um, and then you can get pumpkin juice, which is another signature beverage here, as well as gilly water, which is just water. I'm going to get a pumpkin juice to wash down those beans. And it looks like they've got some other snacky stuff here too. So we got our pumpkin juice, um, and we're kind of hiding in this alcove to drink it. And it's actually Madame Puttyfoot's, which if you recall from the books is where all the teenagers go on their Hogsmeade trips to have romantic dates. So I guess Morgan and I are having a romantic pumpkin juice date. All right, so we've got our pumpkin juice. Here's our romantic Madame Puttyfoot's date. Oh. It tastes like fall. It really does. It really does. Yeah, it's like cinnamony and pumpkin-y. It's just, it's like a pumpkin cider. Yeah. I don't know if I could drink this whole thing right now, though. I definitely think it's something I need to share. I don't love super sweet things, and it's definitely on the sweeter side. But it definitely tastes like fall. Oh, it definitely tastes like fall. And it's 90 degrees here today, so that's not a hard, that's hard. Yeah. Maybe put some fire whiskey on it. Now that would be fall. Ooh, now you're talking. Mm -hmm. It's time for lunch. We are going to go to the three broomsticks. Morgan just mobile ordered, which seems to be working better. We're going to figure that out. Wow. Universal had a little, little issues with it during the, uh, the AP previews, but it seems to be working better. So we ordered early because one of the best things you can do if you want to eat um, in the Wizarding World at the three broomsticks here or the Leaky Cauldron over in Diagon Alley is don't eat at peak lunchtime. 
So if you can eat like right at 11 when they start or a little bit later at like two, you're not gonna have to wait this long. All right, let's go and see. Let's go. The Three Broomsticks has a couple different things that they're known for, fish and chips, uh, the beef pasties, which is what I got the last time I was here. They've got a shepherd's pie. And then they also do like some smoked chicken. You can do a great feast, which feeds multiple people and it's got all their favorites. Uh, the smoked chicken, there's corn on the cob, some salad, um, some sausage. So it's kind of like think about the United Kingdom Pavilion over in Epcot a little bit with the fish and chips um, and some of the things that you'd get over at the Rose and Crown there. It seems like the mobile ordering is more under control. First of all, there are table numbers now. So the wizards and witches will write down your table number. They'll also write down your mobile order number. If you'd like something like a glass of water or extra set of silverware or something, feel free to ask them and they will happily bring that for you. And additionally, they asked if we were pass holders because they're gonna bring us the difference um, in, in cash because we weren't able to use the annual pass holder discount on the app. So things seem to be working pretty smoothly. So it's just now 11 and you can see it is really not crowded. So it really helps to not come out of peak lunch time if you want to come and grab a quick bite to eat. They also do breakfast here. They do like a traditional English breakfast and uh, I think they have pancakes and a couple other things. So it's usually not very crowded at breakfast either. So if you're a, a wizard fan who's an early riser, you could get your breakfast done here. Here is our yummy looking fish and chips. We're gonna split it since we have so much food to eat. Um, but this is what it looks like. It comes with three big pieces of fried fish and some big crispy fries, chips. Um, and then they brought some lemon, which I love because I love squeezing that on fish and then some tartar sauce. And this is a really large portion for one person. So I think definitely shareable, especially if you're eating a bunch of stuff like we are. We are ready and excited to try our fish and chips. Look at that, that is a nice chunk of fish. It really is. Oh, it smells so good too. I'm excited. Cheers. Mm. That's mm. really good. That's really like, can you see? There's a thick fry crust on here. Oh yeah. Like definitely thicker than the Rose and Crown kind. It's doughier. Mm, it's so good. Fried to perfection. Put a little lemon juice on there. Look at all tartar sauce. Mm. Tartar sauce with the fresh lemon juice. That's the way to go. That really amped it up. Overall, I'm very into this. And there's not a lot of savory to be had in the wizarding world but this is excellent. Would you eat this again? I would eat this again. After a lot of sweet drinks, this really hits the spot. This is something I think you could probably get your kids to eat. Um, some of the stuff over at the Leaky Cauldron, which we'll be at later, is a little bit more unusual for theme park food, so you may have a harder time getting your kids to eat that, but I feel like you could get your kids to eat fish and chips. I agree. I think this is a good meal for this event. All right, so I got my pumpkin fizz. Let's see how it is. Ooh, that's really nice. I think it's a little less sweet than pumpkin juice. Do you like it more or less than pumpkin juice? I actually, I think I like it more. It's just like the perfect level of sweet. And the bubble helps, I think. The bubble, yeah, I agree. Oh, this is really good. So that's the superior pumpkin drink. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna say it, yeah. I think this might be the superior. Hot take. Yeah. And if you're wondering what I got to drink, coffee. Who's surprised? No one? I thought so. We have finished our delicious lunch at the Three Broomsticks. And uh, I think it's time to ride a ride. So we have our virtual line for Hagrid's. We're gonna take a, a little after lunch roller coaster adventure which may not be the smartest thing we've ever done but worth it for this attraction right here is kind of a choke point um because over in the silver graded area that is the virtual line for hagrid's and then this is people trying to just get out of this area so this is a little bit of a choke point 
not the best time maybe if you've got a drink to pull down your mask and have a sip but um, overall people seem to do a, a pretty good job here of, of distancing themselves so the line is now wrapping around the fountain and then it's going all the way this way so we're now also going to test out how long it takes to ride Hagrid's right now in the virtual line it's our our new subplot of this video our virtual line ends at 12 10. right now it's about 12 02. so what we were told was to get in line and to make sure that you take a screenshot of your virtual line pass because they will still honor it so it only took us like six minutes to get up here which is right where they're scanning you before the train and the locker so the line is moving pretty quick we'll see what happens when we get inside but don't be discouraged if the line looks super super long part of that is of course because people have to space out six feet sure thank you hello all right you guys are good thank you so again, part of that's because everyone's spacing out six feet. Where there weren't markers on the ground, there were team members making sure everybody was spacing out. Hello! Uh, so keep that in mind. That's why part of the reason the lines look so long. So now that we're inside here, we're moving at a pretty good clip. Uh, we haven't really stopped the whole time, so the timer is still going, but that line definitely was misleading. We are still moving, working our way really quickly through this queue. Morgan, how excited are you right now? I am so excited. This is only my second time going on this ride, and it is, it's amazing. are exiting the attraction within 23 minutes of getting in the line. So that means we got through that whole line and rode the attraction in less than 25 minutes. So again, do not be alarmed by the long queue. It goes fast. Gosh, that ride is good. Oh, so good. It's so good. It is definitely my favorite ride at Universal in either park. It is just amazing. I love that it's like a roller coaster with surprises, but it's also a story behind it. It has a little bit of everything. Do you think a non-Harry Potter person would enjoy it? I do. I think this is one too that there are a lot of kids that could ride it as well. If their height is correct, it's great. Yeah, it's awesome. And I do think, yeah, if you're not a Harry Potter person, obviously you're not gonna like care about the creatures that you see, um, but it's got enough oomph. There's some blast, there's a drop. It's just, it's awesome. Ride it. And don't be discouraged as far as the virtual line goes right now. They add them throughout the day. So like when we first got here, neither of us could get it on our phones. Just kept checking every 20 minutes or so. And one popped up. So. Ugh. Keep trying back for it. It's worth it. What a treat. Now that we have ridden Hagrid's, been delighted, it's time for more sweets. So back into Honey Dukes we go. Thank you. I really wish you guys could smell in here. It smells so good. And there are so many delicious treats that you can get. They have, oh look, a love potion. There's some lemon drops. We've got Tung Tung coffee, jelly slugs. Fizzing Whisbees, exploding bonbons like basically every candy that's mentioned, you can find it in here. So if you wanna try a bunch of things, you can also choose from here. Um, you can make a bag, choose exactly what you want, try a little bit of everything. And right now there's a team member who will help you out with making sure that you can get everything that you need. She'll do it specifically for you. Yeah, before you could come do this yourself, but they're having a witch help out. Um, but you can get just a few things. So that's what we're going to try. Instead of buying boxes of everything, we're just going to get a couple things that we want to try. Just get a couple of them. Here's the prices for you. 
Four twenty-five for a quarter pound, eight fifty for a half pound. There's an assortment of goodies here in the Honeydukes Bakery case as well. All kinds of fudge and caramel apples. I'm sorry, did you say you want one of everything? <laughs> no. Oh my goodness. No. I'm eating a lot, but not that far. Um, that pumpkin cake looks good, looks good, but how's the cauldron cake? It's delicious. It is a chocolate cake with buttercream frosting. Okay. I guess we got to get one of those. All right, good. We'll do it. So here's our cauldron cake. It appears to be 97% frosting. So we are told it's a, a chocolate cake with a buttercream frosting. So here we go. Let's see. It took a little effort, but we found the cake. That's the frosting to cake ratio right there. Morgan first just got frosting. So. I, I have a few crumbs in there, but. Here we go. Here we go. That has to be a frosting. That is all frosting. Good frosting. It's good frosting. But, you know how Harry wow. and Ron eat this? Because they're 11 years old? Yeah. That's exactly who wants to eat this. I believe that's correct. Only an 11 year old would want to eat this much frosting. But once you get down to the cake, I know you didn't really get any, but you can try and get a little cake. The crumb I got was really good. The cake itself is very good. It's really moist and gooey. It's like, Kind of brownie like. Mm, you're right. So we can get past the mountain of frosting, which again, it's good buttercream frosting. It is. Be prepared to share this one. Oh yeah. This is uh, a I lot would, for one person. I would be sick if I ate this whole thing. Now the biggest question is, is the cauldron edible? Question mark. It's bouncy. Like I think it's fondant. Damn. Would you be willing to take a bite? Yes. <laughs> oh, no, it's rubber. It's definitely, now that I'm trying to rip it, it's rubber. I thought for a second that it was gonna be fondant. But that actually makes me like this even more because you could wash this out and it would be like a cool little take home that you could put on your desk or you could put little treats in or maybe even a cocktail. That's true. That's one of the really cool things here is a lot of the food a lot of the candy that you get, you get in something that you can take home as memorabilia from your trip. Yeah, there's like a, a cool butterbeer souvenir glass that I've gotten here before. That's not very much more than just getting the butterbeer, so then you could take that home. A lot of the candy in Honeydukes, if you buy the prepackaged kind, comes in little tins or little bags or something like that. So you get not only a delicious treat, but a little take home. After that sweet, sweet cake, we decided we needed to cool off with a brew from the Hog's Head which is the pub. Um, if you want to go to just the hog's head, you don't need to go through the three broomsticks. You need to come over uh, to the side, past the very loud mandrakes. Could you be quiet for like four seconds, please? Um, and get in this line right here that uh, leads you back to the outdoor seating area of the three broomsticks. It's right next to the restrooms, the mandrake, and there's a special line here, and that's just for people that want to order drinks from the hog's head. Here at the hog's head, they have some exclusive two Harry Potter beers. They've got the Dragon Scale here. They've got the Hogshead Brew, which you can actually only get here in the Hogshead. You can't even get this at other places in the Wizarding World. They have Fire Whiskey. Uh, they do have Butter Beer here, and then they've got some other beers as well. Uh, most of them are from the United Kingdom, like Boddington, Strongbow, and of course, everyone's favorite British beer, Bud Light. Deathly Hallows, they'll act like they don't know what you're talking about, but it's actually a triple layered beer with Strongbow Cider on the bottom and then the Hogshead Brew in the middle and then Guinness on the top. I gotta know the secrets. It actually used to look cooler, insert picture here, uh, because, but they told me they changed which Strongbow they have, so it doesn't, uh, it mixes with the Hogshead. Before it was like three clearly defined layers, lightest to darkest, but here we go. All right. Cheers. Cheers. That is 
so refreshing. So I am normally a lighter or wheat beer drinker, and that actually works for me with this one because the heavy Guinness and the uh, like amber hogshead is offset by the sweet strongbow, so it kind of makes it this perfect like mix of light and dark, and I find it delicious. And I'm actually a no beer drinker, but this is pretty good. It's refreshing on a day like this. Yeah, so. Um, I definitely think that it's really fun that they have exclusive beers that you can't get anywhere else in Harry Potter land. Um, there's the Hogshead, there's Dragon Scale. Um, so I think that's a fun thing to do when you're here is, is try a, a wizard brew. Well, we have done and been everywhere. We wanted to be here in Hogsmeade. So now we are headed with our delicious cold beverages to get in line for the Hogwarts Express so we can go over to Diagon Alley. And we're gonna have our candy on the train just like Ron and Harry. I'm so excited. Me too. That is kind of one of the cool things about Universal is you can bring drinks into the queues and things like that and you can eat on certain attractions and if they say we can't eat we won't. We'll, we'll behave and we'll eat when we get over to Diagon Alley. So there is about, it says a 50 minute wait. We're gonna see if that's true um, to get on the Hogwarts Express, but that's okay. We got beers to drink, we got candy to eat. We're gonna have fun while we wait. <laughs> Guys, my house mascot is here. I'm gonna speak, yes, speak to me, speak to me, Snake. Hello, my name is Molly, proud Salazar Slytherin house member. He seems to be entranced by my words. Yes, good snake, good snake. Yes, I agree, Slytherin is the best house. Thank you for joining me and saying that. I'm gonna walk past you now. Please don't attack me or my friend, even though she's a Hufflepuff. So the wait time said it was gonna be a 50 minute wait, five zero, um, but it's only been about 25 minutes and we're already next to get queued. So, hey, that was definitely in our favor. Cabin E, D, E. Oh, hooray. I have to say, even though we waited longer than we normally would because they'd be able to fill these cabins, it is excellent getting your own cabin. It really is. And it really wasn't that long a wait. We got on pretty quick. Yeah, it was like 25 minutes, which normally, if you could fill these to capacity, that would probably be like 10 minutes. But to have your own cabin, sit in the AC, enjoy it with just your family and not be crammed in here with a group of eight. It makes it even more special. I'm into it. So they reminded us multiple times that you can't take your masks off while on here. So while they didn't say specifically that you can't eat on the train, we want to respect the rules and keep our masks on and yes. not eat on the Hogwarts Express. So we'll have our candy snack when we get to Diagon Alley. See you then. Yeah. We should drop in on the uh, the shrunken head here. Oh, he's asleep. Hello there. Hi, yeah. Welcome to the night bus. Thank you. Do you need a ride? Um, I don't need a ride. Oh, that's good. We don't have a driver. Oh, good. That Where's Ernie? Out. He's gone to run errands in Diagon Alley. Right? Okay, we're headed to Diagon Alley, and we're trying to find a snack. Do you have any recommendations? A snack? Yeah, well, something I mean, to eat. Are you talking like sweets, or are you talking like real food? A you little know? of everything. You can't beat the leaky cauldron when it comes to food. Right. You get a hot cottage pie, you get fish and chips, or you can get something like a chocolate frog over at these with the Oh, like good thing. Make sure to shake up the box so it can't hop away though. Good thinking, yeah. good thinking. So we just met Stan, the uh, the night bus driver, and before we even go into Diagon Alley, we're gonna go to a little stand out here that not a lot of people know about, and it's got a, a, a few different snacks. We're gonna check those out. Maybe we'll find a new fave that, that a lot of people don't know. Mm. 
So here at this little stand outside, across from uh, Grimmauld Place, they have jacket potatoes, which are actually just baked potatoes, but they've got a few different varieties. They've got a beans and cheese, a broccoli and cheese, a loaded, which is like a classic loaded baked potato with like cheese, sour cream, chives. And then we ordered the shepherd's pie baked potato, jacket potato, because that's insane and we had to try it. She suggested we take our potato over to the U-Rest area right around the corner. That's one of the relaxation zones here at Universal Studios where they've got social distance tables where you can take your masks off, breathe a little bit, um, bring a snack in there like we're doing. So that's where we're headed to eat this delicious potato. Nothing says Florida summer like a po hot potato a with- real hot <laughs> loaded potato. Meat and yeah, here we go. We are sitting at the U-Rest area. It's actually nice. There's some tables and chairs, fan, shade, and you can take your mask off and just relax, enjoy a snack, or just enjoy a few minutes. And uh, it's meat potato time. All right. She looks like surprised. That <laughs> yeah, she, she didn't have a lot of people visiting her stand. And she seemed delighted and surprised by our presence. <laughs> I thought this is what we ordered. Look at that, look at all, I mean, it smells and looks really good. So I'm, I love a baked potato. I don't know about you, Morgan, but like, it looks really good. So I'm excited to try it. Here we go. Meat potato. Ooh. That's actually delicious. That is really good. That is shockingly delicious. It tastes like a shepherd's pie. Plus cheese. Plus cheese. Well, yeah. That's never going to be bad. That is really good. And I love a baked potato, but when you're going to put some beef on there and some, some cheese, I am delighted by this right now. And I don't care that it is 90 degrees. I'm going to keep eating no, it. No, this is a good surprise. Mm. This may be like the, the underdog winner of the day as far as savory goes. This might be my favorite savory so far. Mm -hmm. This is good. So since we found a nice spot, for us to take our masks off and enjoy a snack. We decided. Time for some sweets. Candy time. Finished our potato, so now it's candy time. Okay, so one of the candies that you could get at Honey Dukes, my hand is stuck in the bag. This egg. It's a gummy egg. I have a feeling it's just gonna taste like a gummy, but I'm so intrigued that it's like an egg. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Mm. Tastes, oh. tastes like scrambled eggs. Yeah. It's a gummy. It's good. Yeah, we also got fizzing whizzies, not to be confused with fizzing whizbies. Fizzing whizzies. Now this seems really hard, so... You see it? There's different colors. I wonder if that means there's different flavors. Mine's like pink. Mine's a green, so maybe apple? Let's see. Oh, it's sour. Oh, it's real sour. Mm, but once you get past the sour, it's sweet. Kind of like a warhead, mm. but not as serious. Mine is candy <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I can't, oh, oh, cracking it. I can't nail down a flavor. It just tastes like candy. It's also very hard. Mm-hmm, but I just crashed mine. My dentist probably hates me. The wizard we were talking to in there said his favorite thing in all the bulk candy are these candy raspberries and blackberries. So we had to get them and, and give them a whirl. I'm gonna try the raspberry first. I'll go with that too. Ooh. Ooh, that is really good. That is the best one yet. <laughs> it's like gummy on the inside. Yeah. But there's like crunch from the berry. From the outside, yeah. Looking at it closely, yeah, you can see it's kind of like, almost like a gumdrop consistency, but then it's got like the crunchy blackberry thing going on. It was a good recommendation from that wizard. Yeah, he was wise. He might be a Ravenclaw. The excitement level is real. We made it! We made it! 
We made it. Every time I walk into Diagon Alley, I'm just like giddy. I know. This is so exciting. I love being here. I truly like when I stop and look around, I have to like not cry. <laughs> like this more than anywhere else really feels like you are in the Harry Potter world. It is truly magical. It's the best. So we're gonna go get something to drink, wash down that potato and those candy treats. We are headed into the Fountain of Fair Fortune, which is right here. It's a little shop. They only serve drinks, maybe some chips, but they don't serve food really. And this is a great spot to come when you're in Diagon Alley for a beer or a non-alcoholic beverage or a butter beer or something. Look at that. There's basically no one in here. I was right, they sell chips. But most importantly, here's their drink list. They've got butter beer, frozen butter beer, fishy green ale, gilly water, wizard's brew, dragon scale, and draft beer, and some fire whiskey. So we are gonna be trying out the fishy green ale, which I don't think either of us have ever tried. And it's an iconic drink here that I'm nervous and excited to try. that sold us these said that it was a very like black licorice deal where either you love it or you hate it. So we're gonna see what we each think. I think I'm gonna. All right. Sorry, got some boba balls. Yeah, they're not boba balls. I don't know that I hate it either, but I also don't know if I love it. I don't hate it. That's my... You know what it tastes a little bit like? It's a few different kinds of toothpaste. Yeah. Like All you, at once. Like if you got Colgate and then also that cinnamon Colgate that came out for a while. And then you added a burst of blueberry. That's what this is. Yeah. I mean, it's green, so that's cool. I can't say that I would order this over some of the other signature beverages. I don't know that I would either. Like, it's not as cinnamony as like pumpkin juice or a pumpkin fizz, but I think I'd pick that over this. I agree. When we went in there, we were told that it kind of tastes like Christmas. I can kind of see that. A little bit, yeah, because it's like peppermint and cinnamon. Yeah, the flavors of Christmas, but... Ultimately, this would not be my first choice of beverages to have here. Right, but I'm also not mad at it. The more we drank that, the more we enjoyed that. It was one of the top picks of the day so far. I am honestly shocked. So, since that wasn't super sweet, we're going to get something super sweet. Yep. We are on our way to Sugar Plums, the candy shop. All right, into Sugar Plums we go. Hello. One treat that's very fun that I would recommend uh, possibly purchasing is a chocolate frog because they do come with a card of a famous witch or wizard. Um, it is just a solid chocolate frog, so it's not like a super fun or exciting treat for us to eat on camera, but they are really fun and, and you could collect the cards, you could trade the cards, so that's a good take home and it's packaged nicely for you to take home. We wanted to try another candy treat since there's so many things to choose from and we had narrowed it down to either the fizzing Wisbees, which are like milk chocolate with basically pop rocks inside of them. Um, they're kind of shaped like bees. Or the exploding bonbons, um, which are white chocolate with a citrus pop. We're gonna go with bees. We were told by the witch here that these are really good. So we're gonna give them a try. She said these had the bigger pop. 
Yes. And we're all about theatrics here. So here at Sugar Plums, they also have a bakery case. It's not quite as big as the one at Honeydukes. Unfortunately, we wanted pumpkin pasties, which are a very iconic potter treat, but neither place has them right now. Um, since they reopened, they haven't had them, but hopefully they'll have them soon. We have been intrigued, however, though, by this no melt ice cream. They had it at Honey Dukes as well. And there's a vanilla and a chocolate one. And it kind of just looks like frosting in a cup, but maybe it'll taste like ice cream. It's like decorated like a little sundae. I don't know. We're going to try that along with our exploding bonbons. So we're going to try the no melt ice cream. I think it's just frosting. <laughs> Let's see. That's just frosting. That is frosting. With, I mean, it does have what's kind of cool, the uh, sprinkles at the bottom here. And the chocolate one had like little candy dot things, like probably M&M-esque, maybe. But yeah, that is just vanilla frosting. It's pretty good though. Oh, it's good. <laughs> it's good. Like, this reminds me of the frosting my mom used to make. Well, now we know the secret to why it doesn't melt. I think we figured out the magic behind that one. It's just frosting. We are now going to try the exploding bonbons. They're white chocolate. And there's some kind of explosion involved, so let's see. It's like Pop Rocks or something are in there. Citrus flavored Pop Rocks. I think it's pineapple. No, oh, it says. Yep, orange and pineapple flavor. Mm. Frosted. it. I like that. I do too. They said this one was more fun than the Fizzing Whispies, which also have the Pop Rocks in them. Because the pop is bigger, which I definitely get that. Because you've got the chocolate on the outside and then it's like, oh, here it goes. I can hear it. My mouth like popping. Oh, yeah, it's like at the back of your mouth. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, that's fun. And I like this one because they're individually wrapped, so you could get it and share it with a bunch of people, or you can take them home as opposed to some of the other treats. It's a good take home little, little dive. That one's fun. That one was really fun. Yeah, that and is tasty. That is a top drawer treat uh, from the candy shop. We realized in all of our excitement of candy trying that we forgot in our little candy bags we forgot we had the sherbet lemons too which when you look at it it's shocking because i mean this looks so different from the busy with yeah we're gonna try one of dumble's favorites the sherbet lemons i'm into it that's good i love lemon oh me too i'm a lemon fan it has the right amount of tart and sweet Dumbledore knows what he's talking about on this one. He's wise. And I think if I were to get the bag candy again, I would get mostly those and then those raspberry ones. Those, those are, are my favorite. Those are my as favorite well. and the most unique, I think, of the bag candy. We are headed now to the hopping pot, which is this walk up stand here in Diagon Alley. We did mobile order, which means we go over to the left hand side. Otherwise, the line is to the right. The Hopping Pot does butterbeer, frozen and regular, a couple different drinks. They have beef pasties if you want a savory snack. They've also got butterbeer ice cream here. So at the Hopping Pot, we ordered two other of the signature beverages. This is the Tongue Tine Lemon Squash. It actually has like a whole, or at least a half a lemon in there. I haven't seen it too many other places. I think some of the restaurants have it, but this is the lemon squash. And then I got the Otter's Busy Orange Juice, which you'll see around the side here, has some cinnamon sugar. It looks really good and it smells really good. I'm hoping these are nice and refreshing after all that candy. Yeah. All right, cheers. cheers. I just found a new favorite drink. Oh. That is like, I mean lemonade, but really good lemonade. Like it's still really tart, not sickly sweet, perfectly refreshing. Yeah, this might be my favorite new drink. And this is very much tastes a bit like orange juice. 
but I really like the cinnamon sugar around the edge. I feel like it does give it kind of like a little bit of a kick that you're not expecting. It has been like six minutes since we had something super sweet. So now we're in Florian Fortis to use the ice cream part. We figured we would get a little ice cream and continue our sweet fest. Yeah. There's a few different options when you come into Florian's. Um, you can do soft serve ice cream. They've got a variety of flavors there. Banana, chocolate, Granny Smith, mint, pistachio, vanilla, orange marmalade, toffee, toffee apple, and strawberries and cream. Um, and then they've also got hard packed ice cream, lots of flavors there, chocolate chili, apple crumble, vanilla, salted caramel blondie, chocolate, clotted cream, earl grey and lavender, sticky toffee pudding, chocolate and raspberry and strawberry and peanut butter. All of those sound amazing, um, but we are going to go with the strawberry chocolate peanut butter sundae because that is what Harry eats when he lives in Diagon Alley for a few weeks before term after blowing up his aunt in Prisoner of Azkaban. So we thought when in Diagon Alley do as Harry does. So here's our chocolate peanut butter strawberry sundae. It's the strawberry peanut butter ice cream and then there's hot fudge, some cake crumbs and whipped cream on top. And it looks so delicious. And it comes in this souvenir uh, cup. It says Florian first he's ice cream on that side and then it says the Wizarding World of Harry Potter on that side. Um, you can do other sundaes. You can do ice cream in this cup. It's $8.49, which I actually think is not super crazy for an ice cream sundae with a cup you can take home. Ice cream time. I really want to put this between bread and just have an ice cream, peanut butter and jelly sandwich. This is so good. The crumbs on this might be my favorite part. I'm having a really hard time stopping to talk to you guys because I just want to shove this in my mouth. I'm not actually normally a huge hot fudge person, but I think with the balance of the peanut butter and then the crumbs, the hot fudge, with like, I don't know, something about it that it is working. I understand why Harry ate a bunch of these when he was in Diagon Alley because what a treat. I would too. This may be my favorite thing so far today. It's, you know what, I agree. I think it is. And what I like about Florian's, other than this delicious thing, is that there's so many cool flavors to try. Like, you could get normal flavors like chocolate and vanilla and stuff, but then they have like the sticky toffee pudding, they had a chocolate chili, they, they had have an apple. An, yeah, they also have an Earl Grey. It sounds weird, but it is really good and really refreshing. Friendly reminder for all my annual pass holder friends out there, discounts work at places like that on uh, non-alcoholic drinks and food um, at a lot of these little shops. They're like merchandise, so. After our delicious ice cream treat, we are now headed to the Leaky Cauldron. This is a full service restaurant here in Diagon Alley, but you can mobile order beforehand and Highly recommended that you do because it'll make the process go a little bit faster. As you come in, you can kind of see some of the options. They do have fish and chips here as well, but here they have a few more unique British things. Like they have a shepherd's pie and a cottage pie and a fisherman's pie, I believe. So you can do a little sampler of multiple of them. Um, there's the cottage pie. They do have a chicken sandwich. They've got a banger sandwich, which is a uh, sausage. They do a soup and salad, bangers and mash, toad in the hole, beef, lamb, and Guinness stew. They do this nice plowman's platter, which like two people could share. Here's the fisherman's pie. So a little bit more unique food. And I've actually never eaten here, so I'm excited to try it out. It is so cool in here. This is such a cool restaurant. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Oh, we're dining with our friend Sirius tonight. That's nice. Y'all, I am loving this place. It looks just like the movie. It is awesome. Big fan.
I cut into the uh, toad and hole to look at the Yorkshire pudding, and it like looks potatoey. But Morgan looked it up, and it was what like egg. It's egg flour and I think it's like just egg flour and water. I think so. Time out. We're finding out what Yorkshire pudding right. is. Eggs, flour, milk, and water. And then it's got some bangers, aka sausage, baked right in. Here we go. Toad and hole. I'm a little nervous. Oh. Mm. That's good. I was not expecting to enjoy that, but I do. It tastes like breakfast. It's like... Well, yeah, because the Yorkshire pudding's like eggs and flour and milk. It definitely has a quiche vibe, and the sausage is very good. It has a little bit of a kick to it. Yeah, there's, it's really nice. And I think this is probably the same sausage they do in like the bangers and mash, the banger sandwich. So, but the sauce, so yeah, the sausage is excellent, and I'm pleasantly surprised by the nice little doughy situation on the outside. And it comes with gravy as well, which when you have that mixed in there, mm -hmm. and it's like twelve bucks, which is pretty inexpensive for a sit-down meal at it. Yeah. So, this is kind of like a hybrid sit-down meal. Like, you can order on the app. You can, I believe, order at the counter if you don't do the app, but they prefer the app right now. And then you sit and they bring it to you. So, I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised. I mean, I think I like fish and chips more. I would choose fish and chips over this, but honestly, I wasn't sure what I would think of this guy. I liked it. Yeah, I'm a fan. Good job, Toad and Hole. We are also trying scotch eggs. Morgan had to Google what these are. It's a, this is a hard boiled egg and it is encased in a sausage that is breaded and fried. Um, I'm nervous. Yeah. Morgan looks more afraid than I feel. Yeah. This is probably my scary one of the day. She hasn't had to eat dried crabs before, but still. No, I'm a newbie to this. Um, Cheers. All right. Oh. Um. Hmm. Not a fan. Not my favorite, but it's not as scary as I thought. It's better when you dip it in this hot mustard. That spicy mustard is A+. Plus. It's better when you do that. The sausage around it is really good. See, I actually like the egg better because I really like hard boiled eggs. So, I'm more into the egg. Well, it's an interesting one to try while you're here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We, we actually ordered, the, you can order just like one of them for like three dollars and that's actually what i ordered so we could split it but they accidentally brought us the whole platter so we each got our own there's comes with four on the platter um i mean you might as well try it too for the story why not i'm now just eating the egg dipped in the mustard we are also sharing the peach tree fizzing tea which is the last of the specialty beverages i think here in the wizarding world yes but you can get most of the ones that we've talked about today here at the Leaky Culture. Mm -hmm. You can do the lemon squash, the orange, the fishy green ale, butterbeer. You can get pretty much all of them here in addition to some of the specialty beers and stuff. So, yeah, let's, uh, let's try it. Oh, that's a good one, too. Obviously, you have to like peach. It tastes like a peach snapple. Yeah, it tastes exactly like peach snapple. It's good though, it's refreshing. It's, uh, honestly, all of these have been really good. I think yeah. the lemon is still my favorite. Yeah. But you pick your favorite fruit, there's probably there's... one you can uh, get a drink of here. Yeah, I like this one. I like peach snapple though, so. That's a good one. And I haven't seen this one on other menus, so if you want to try this one, I believe you have to come here. For dessert, we decided to get the Butterbeer Potted Cream. It comes in this super cute little jar. Boop. It's like latches. It's super cute. You don't get to keep the jar though. 
Um, but I have read that this is A+. Plus. They had another uh, potted cream, too. I believe it was a chocolate one, yeah. Um, but that we had to try the butterbeer one, which I think is going to be like pudding. It's very gelatinous. It definitely looks pudding-esque, but it smells good, so. Yeah. Mm. Oh my gosh. It tastes just like butterbeer. It reminds me a lot of the foam that's on top of the frozen butterbeer. Slightly different texture. I would say though, if you've never been here and you're choosing between this or butterbeer, I would say get the drinkable butterbeer. Like I would say probably do the frozen one if you've never tried any butterbeer. You could also, we didn't try it today, but there's butterbeer flavored fudge. I've had the butterbeer ice cream before. There's soft serve butterbeer ice cream you can get a few places. During the cooler months, they actually do a hot butterbeer drink, which is A plus, but it's obviously 1000 degrees outside today. So that would be not good. So there's lots of butterbeer treats to be had. Um, but I really like this one. This is good. For our last stop today, we are headed into one of my favorite stores, Weasley's Wizard Wheezes. Shenanigans for all, it says. Uh, the witch told us that you shouldn't buy this and eat this before you come into the park because you won't be allowed in, which was a really good joke. Mm. I like it. I like the jelly bean part because I like cinnamon more than the fun part. I'm not a huge cinnamon fan, but it's fun. I like it. It still tastes kind of nice. Like, I love a hot tamale. Fun fact about me, my AIM screen name used to be Hot Tamale, but Molly was spelled like my name. I see what you did there. Yeah. Very clever. Thing. So, one cool thing about the um, the treats in Weasley's Wizard Wheezes, they actually do sell a skiving snack box, and it's got a full size of the nosebleed nougat, the uh, the fever, fever fudge, fudge, the puking pastels, which they're sold out of right now, and then the the fainting fancies. So you can buy a box. It looks just like the one in the movie where it like opens up and folds out and everything, and you get full size boxes of all four of the different treats. And it's $39, which is actually more expensive than just buying four boxes if you wanted to, but it'd be a collectible, cool souvenir, it'd be a cool gift yeah, for your exactly. Potter friends. Um, and again, merchandise discounts work in here because this is a merchandise shop, so it'd be a little bit less than $39. So overall, um, again, with just like the candy from Honey Dukes, is it my favorite treat we've had? No, but it's fun. And it's, it'd be a really cool gift, I feel like. If you had a Potter fan, fan like a, a something to take home to somebody, a box or two of that would be a really, really good thing. But I'm also going to, like, keep picking out the jelly beans out of this right now. You thought I was kidding. What a day of treats. Do you know how many treats we had? We, how many did we have? We had 26, I just counted, different Harry Potter treats today. Wow. That's a lot of, that's a lot of snacks. So Look. we did have some favorites for the day. Yeah. Drink wise, the lemon, the lemon squash is the where it's at. The lemon squash. I would put though, the fishy green ale as an honorable mention. That's true. And obviously I, love the the hog's head i think it's so cool that you can get custom beers here but i definitely the the lemon squash was very delicious um and i agree that that fishy green ale i did not want to try that honestly <laughs> i was nervous and it was actually very good so i agree there snack wise snack wise the sunday yeah for me that was the real that was huge Yes, that was the good good right there. And I love ice cream, so I think that was definitely a win for I would pick ice cream over like a cupcake or a brownie, so. And this one, the flavors were amazing. 
Yeah, and it was like the one Harry got, so that was cool. Exactly. Another dark horse. I really liked the potato with the shepherd's pie. I, that was my favorite savory thing yeah. that we got today. I which... was like, it is 100 million degrees outside. I do not want to eat a hot potato with meat on it, but I did want to eat it, it turned out. That it was, was awesome. so good. That... And really, like, I don't feel like enough people talk about that. Place. Yeah, um, and as always, butterbeer. Butterbeer. Butter. You gotta get it when you're here. You literally didn't even come here if you don't drink a butterbeer, so at least try that. Well, friends, that is a wrap on our Eating in Harry Potter World video. Morgan, thank you so much for coming to eat all those treats with me. It was a pleasure. Let us know what you guys thought on social media, what your favorite snacks are. Yes, let us know in the comments. Do you like cold or frozen butterbeer? Do you like the fishy green ale? Do you like scotch eggs? We want to know. Until next time, friends, make sure to rate, review, subscribe to our channel, follow us on Instagram at All Ears Net. And until next time, y'all, I'm Molly. I'm Morgan. And it's, it's been magical. Want to see more of my videos? Click over here. Want to subscribe? You can do that right here. And also, ring that notification bell to make sure you get instantly notified anytime we post a new video. Thanks for following. See you real soon.